Now, this is a very important section and many of you have concerns about this. Oh, I am not good in language. Uh, what language? English language. Okay. How can you be good in, how can you be good in English language? That is a question I will ask in return. I will illustrate what I mean. Come on. You have, uh, as much as I have, I have not spoken English um, till I was, uh, I, up to 1996, when I joined uh, uh, PhD in ISC Bangalore, I do not think I have ever spoken English a full sentence, up to 1996. So, what would be my age? 96. Uh, okay, but let us not worry about age. Uh, up to 1996, uh, how many years back? 1996. 18 years back. So, uh, so 18 years back, that means uh, uh, till, till about 20, I have not speak, spoken in English. I learned grammar, I learned you know poems, I learned prose, written well in exams, got good marks, all those are fine, but I have never spoken in English up to 1996. So, then I have the right to tell you that you should not worry about whether you can speak in English or not. This is a reluctance, this is a barrier that each one of you should overcome. Because if I could overcome, why not you could overcome? You are going to overcome that, but you should have a determination that I am going to speak on stage, I am going to speak in English to other people. Because you know, keep in mind that all the nationalist feelings, etcetera, etcetera, keep that, that is fine. But you know, I am talking about a global scenario. Globally, English is the only language where you can go to any other country and give a talk. National language, etcetera, is fine. But globally, this is the only language by, through which you can communicate science and technology results to other parts of the world. You should write well, you should speak well, and that in English. So, you should give a serious thought that whether you want to be a local hero or you want to be a global hero. You want to be a local commodity product or you want to be a globalized product with much brighter prospect anywhere in the world. The decision is yours. And I am not preaching that English is great. English is a wonderful language, but you have to take a, take a pledge that I want to improve. How do you improve? Read more and speak more. To whom you speak? You speak yourself. When, if you are in a, in a strongly local region and if you begin to speak English, your friends will alienate you. Oh, no, no, he is very fashionable, let, let us not talk. You know, my wife had an interesting experience. Uh, she studied in Trivandrum and uh, a few uh, students came from uh, Manipal, uh, Mizoram. Uh, this is ex external quota in that college, it is a, a government college. So, they of course, they, 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 they can speak only English. Or, or, or Hindi and uh, people in Trivandrum will not understand Hindi, uh, Hindi or they will understand English, but they will not speak in English. Okay, they have the reluctance factor. So, uh, when uh, these boys come, uh, you know all girls, girls will disperse, because they are fearing that he is going to come and ask something in English, which they do not want to respond, because they, they, they are shy about responding. So, these are like real situations, okay. but keep in mind that you must must work on improving your uh, English language skills, that is going to be very useful uh, in, the, in the long run. So, now coming back to this, uh, on stage you are giving a scientific talk, do you have room to worry about English language? I do not think so, but at the same time you know English language, you know many words, you can construct sentences, you can still speak, but what you, what is bothering you is that you cannot speak like an American. That is none of our concern. Let the Americans speak, because they are speaking from uh, you know uh, like first standard onwards. They are speaking from their childhood. We did not speak. Then why do we expect that we should speak as good as American? That is a wrong thought. You speak what is, what, what you can afford to speak. And that is a bottom line, that is a very, very strong point I want to make that you nurture your native, native English speaking ability native, uh, you, you know, it is a wrong connotation, uh, native I am stressing that you will have strong mother tongue accent. And I will illustrate, the, the, the second half of the slide is an illustration of this mother tongue accent. See, to me it is a pleasure listening to different mother tongue oriented English language. So, we call it like 
a Banglish, Manglish, uh, all kind of you know hybrid English languages, you know Hinglish, H I. Okay, so it's okay. It's okay because why I say okay is that I travel to many countries in the world. I have spoken English language with many people, people from Africa, people from uh, you know typically in Middle East, people from UK, people from Germany, people from Japan, from China. I have spoken to many many people. Do you think that all of them speak like Americans? No. They speak with strong Japanese touch. You know how a Japanese will speak? Uh, uh, you use um, uh, sim, sim, simple words. Uh, uh, I'm I'm re, re, reading the second um, second line. This is how they will speak. Why do you worry about your mother tongue touch? It's a wrong notion. Use what you are good at. Okay, there is absolutely nothing wrong in having mother tongue touch. Okay, as you progress, you will naturally improve. You know, I do not know how much uh, uh, mother tongue touch I have, but many friends told me that I have some mother tongue touch. At the same time, I do not have a strong accent, but this is improved over the years and you can improve over the years and you can slowly uh, you know, uh, make the pronunciations more correct and all, but that is not the concern when you begin to practice as a speaker. Okay, that that's something you should keep in mind. That use words. Now I'm going back to the slide. Use words which are familiar to you. And there are interesting stories about you know people um, borrow borrow words from uh, not from dictionary. Unfortunately, they borrow words from literature, the textbooks which they have read, are written by native English language speakers, the Britishers, the Americans. They wrote these textbooks, and people just mug those words. And one time I was listening to a research presentation by a student and somebody uh, made a statement in, in, in the introduction. Uh, he said that uh, this field has witnessed unprecedented growth in last several years. And then I asked just to you know uh, test whether the person knows what is meant by unprecedented. I asked him uh, do you know what is the meaning of that word unprecedented? Then he had a bright smile sir I do not know. Okay, so what my suggestion is that you can improve your vocabulary and you must improve your vocabulary by knowing more and more words, but if you put that on slide, you must know what it is. You must know the meaning of that and you can use all bombastic words, okay, no problem. You can use all bombastic words in your slide, but the problem is that you must know what it, what it really means and what it means in the given context. So, there are many words which are used in uh, dual uh, you know one one example i can give is apparent you know we talk in physics about apparent weight what is apparent one should ask this question and many times when people speak they say that apparently okay this word is like uh, contextual very very contextual and uh, the the meaning differs uh, from from one context to other context you can go back to dictionary and verify so you must know in what context you have used and you must know the meaning of the words that are there in your slide and what you what you speak okay and it can be a limited vocabulary it's fine because it's a long process improving scientific presentation is a long process it's a lifelong process okay i may be a better speaker i can only be a better speaker tomorrow i can't be a worse speaker I, I i can't be like going back in time okay so what i'm saying is tomorrow you're going to be a better speaker and even further from there you will be an even better speaker but it is a continuous process, it is a long long process and you should know the tips and you should continuously improve yourself. And uh, when you say I, I could give a good talk that does not mean that you spoke like an American, you know that that is not the, the expectation. You are not supposed to speak like an American, perhaps you when you get a chance to go to uh, US or UK stay, stay, stay there for a few years, come back with an improved accent, it is still okay. And some people change their accent completely and some people still retain their Indian accent, uh, but with Im improvements to the uh, pronunciations of different words, that is okay. But while being here, you are not supposed to speak like an American, it is not required. That is not the meaning of giving a good talk. Meaning of giving a good talk is to express yourself and deliver the content that is there in the slide in a convincing fashion. 
and language is one of, one, only one of those ingredients that will help you do that, but that is not the only ingredient. The notion that people generally carry is that unless I speak good English, my presentation is bad, which is incorrect. So, let me repeat that statement. Many people have this wrong notion that unless I speak good English, my presentation is treated as bad. That is not correct. Okay. If that is the case, many, many Japanese scientists who are like really you know Nobel laureates and very high stature Japanese scientists, they are not good speakers. If it is assessment is done only based on language. Okay. So, they Japanese have an inherent limitation, Chinese people have inherent limitation in digesting English language, because their, their language structure is so different from English that uh, it is very dif difficult. Okay. So, do not emphasize on uh, the uh, in modulating or, or changing your native English speaking skills, thinking that only that will fetch you brownie, that will uh, gain you points, uh, only, only if you use uh, you know very difficult words or uncommon words, that is not the intention. Okay. And uh, uh, when you use text from literature, and this is a, a very important point. When you use text from literature, many people, many, particularly students have this unique ability of mugging it up. That is, they, they, they will try to by heart the text. And while by hearting, what would happen? On stage, you are already like, you know, adrenaline levels are high, heartbeat is more and you have managed a early a few minutes, but still mugging will be so dangerous that you will miss certain words and still you continue with the statement and it will be really hilarious at times. If you miss a word from a statement, you can imagine how terrifying it can be. Okay. So, do not mug. So, what I suggest is that you understand the content of that text which you want to, want to tell to the audience, but speak in a language which is natural to you. Let the be there, but you do not by heart and speak the same text. If the text be, if text is there, audience can naturally read it, but what you understood you should tell them. So, there is a distinction between mugging somebody's text and just uh, you know burping it over versus uh, you uh, understand the topic, understand the essence of the text and telling in your own language. I prefer the latter one. Understand in your own, your own uh, terms and then speak what you understood, that is better. Now, it is some illustration, it is mostly an audio illustration, that let me read the following text to drive home the point which I was stressing about. I was simply going to post office to hostel office. So, people in, in Kerala would be uh, tipped off. If you remember my second slide, I said that if there is a coincidence with anyone in the audience, it is deliberate. Okay. So, that my points are conveyed more powerfully. I was simply going to post office and hostel office to find where my phone was. So, people at some centers may be laughing. To find where my phone was. Okay. And the proper words are written there. At last, I found under the table in a government office. What I am saying here, what I am saying here is this is okay. You are getting the point? This is okay. You can talk about post office, hostel office, simply under the table, apple, it is okay. This is the mother tongue touch which I am referring to, where the file is, it is okay. But you are conveying where the file is, right. It is okay, you keep that in mind. It is a very, very powerful statement which I want to make. All of India will suffer if we get confined to this narrow, narrow thought process that unless I speak like an American, I am not going to be able to give a good speech. Incorrect. You speak with what you are comfortable with, and you begin to speak with what you are comfortable with. As you refine yourself over a long stretch of time, over 2 years, 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, you are going to be improving naturally. Okay. So, all this where my bile was will change, it has to change. And rural background, India is a rural country, right? And how do you expect somebody who started speaking English in 1996 
to be so precise in pronunciation it's it's not an expectation which is uh, which is like you know reasonable so i promote a touch of region language is fine okay so i have left out a few regions of the country so then i took an apple and ran to the class but i was late so now the all the rajni ad is there so people can understand it much more um, i ran to the class but i was late okay so now kolaveri is so famous right now the the uh, all all this uh, language is now uh, spreading all over all over the nation through the media electronic media and so on friends keep in mind what you can you do it on stage if on the other hand if you come to the stage and start speaking like an american many times it will look ridiculous so we don't want to take such risk what you are good at you practice it is going to be better therefore what i am saying is that if you want to give a good presentation how good you are at english is not a concern that should stop you from giving a talk so this is a barrier overcoming push that i am giving to many what is the barrier that you think that you have strong mother tongue accent therefore you you are not good in english this is your own judgment i am not telling that i never told anyone that your english is bad i will tell incorrect usages i will correct their text i will correct when they make mistakes but i will never tell that your english is bad your english requires improvement that is what i tell mother tongue accent is not a crime because how in the world you are expected to speak a language all of a sudden even though you are learning but you are not speaking for 10 15 20 years in your life you did not speak english then how how in the world you are is it a magic that you will start speaking english from you know 21st birthday onwards no why do you expect so it's an incorrect expectation it it's unreasonable therefore i promote that you speak in a language which is you, which you are comfortable speak in your own english language which is you are comfortable and slowly and steadily you will improve and you will gain confidence it's it's going to be just fine all is well do you think that that is a great uh, uh, english language but look at the popularity of that statement all is well all is well amir khan that movie three years all is well all is well all is well you know all is well is what it, it's not really a great uh, english language you know the idea has to be conveyed even if you say i i i bear my file was he is searching for the file right the idea is to be conveyed so you give em emphasis to the content and its delivery not get entangled don't don't get tied up with this barrier of no 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 my pronunciations are generally bad so i will not go to the stage instead the attitude should be such that okay today i will do the announcement let me go to the stage and i will do the announcement with all my strong mother tongue accent fine it's fine see nobody no no firang is sitting there right nobody is watching you it's all indians fellow indians it's okay and from your own your own region why do you fear and i said that early that don't fear about being judged stage belongs to you it's their job that they will judge it's your job that you perform okay so this is a very important thing that this will re uh, reduce the barrier or at least the barrier uh, that you should cross will appear much lower than otherwise but if you think that you can't pronounce words you make mistakes etc you're not going to be able to overcome it so keep in mind that you use your natural language when you are on stage speech modulations and demodulations i have done it without telling it many times uh, in last uh, two sessions what is modulation and demodulation that if you speak like a dc current you know most of you are technologists so you would know dc current has a steady and ac is up and down so we can't uh, you know use either of these you should have a steady rhythmic speech the same time when you have to tell take a deviation i i told yesterday one one of the fav, one of my favorite words is to use now we are going to look at so you had a steady speech and then you you are giving that extra emphasis that is called modulation so you are increasing the volume so suddenly when you are 
taking a diversion till now so till now is a normal thing till now we uh, we were discussing on stage uh, issues that one should address now i will talk about modulations and demodulation the very now is modulation so while speaking you should deliberately have certain modulations and use it sparingly you can't modulate in every three sentences then it becomes distracting okay and what is demodulation demodulation is to like you are speaking the most important section in your presentation you know look this is such a wonderful result nobody have ever found this so that's like completely modulated uh, phrase this this is something really extraordinary and people have never thought about this that's modulation and once the modulation is done demodulate so now i will tell you what we found so it's normal it's a demodulation and when you really go to the peak of your presentation and you are naturally excited at least i am i am quite excited about you know when i present my results if there are some outstanding results i get very excited and you know doing research at the, I, I think there is there were there were lots of sections about research methodology doing research is a passion okay it's it's not just a profession i think it's uh, if you uh, treat it as a profession it it is uh, something uh, some sort of a degradation to that uh, area of doing research doing research is a passion it's a hobby and professor belaram in uh, in institute of science who is the current director he wrote a uh, editorial in current science few, few years back he said that research is a profession uh, it's a hobby where you get paid for doing it it's a hobby it's a passion and when you present your own results naturally that passion gets reflected these are the times when you can modulate and demodulate when you go to uh, present those and uh, i i uh, prefer to give this local summaries what are these local summaries that when i deviate from like i said in you know, content creation before i leave content creation i will just summarize what are the major points in content creation and then i go to like say on stage performance and on stage performance some of the most important things is how to manage first few minutes and what language and words that you should use these are key points so before i leave on stage performance i must reiterate these points so that is called a local summary local summary is important so that you can bring back the attention and keep the audience with your your flow the flow of the talk that's important and speak loud and clear so here the pronunciation aspects are not something that i'm referring to speak loud and clear and you will see a rich variety of uh, you know students uh, by being in an institution like this Uh, that some people can't really speak loud they will just murmur uh, you know but you have to overcome these limitations you have to speak loud and if you speak loud the audio uh, av people would readjust the sound but if you speak too low they are helpless signal has to come right then only they can amplify general attitude general approach should be that you speak loud and it is not shouting i don't think i have shouted and i can shout really hard you know but i'm not shouting here but i'm speaking loud that is a recommended practice it's it you should speak loud and clear and clarity is something it you you know that you are speaking clear and you also know that you are not speaking clear because there are sections in the presentation where you are not confident and you like you, you know somehow uh, done what what does that mean so somehow you are skipping through you know keep in mind that people listening to you are much more experienced usually and they will understand and exactly that point you will be caught and they know that you, you are not confident uh, uh, this you know many people have shown uh, uh, that so they will catch you be careful about that so speak loud and clear do not go too fast do not go too slow that's a very difficult statement to follow sir is telling me that don't do, don't go too fast sir is also telling that don't go too slow what's the way out 
mid path. There is a famous uh, uh, quote from, I am neither a Tolstoyan nor a Marxist, but a compromise between the both. I think it is a very, very uh, important statement, like you know, you do not go too fast, do not go too slow. And I have a, a tiny little cartoon here, uh, the, so this, this car, uh, this car is a hybrid car, it is a, a car, it is half rust and half car half of it has rusted, it is old. So, it is a hybrid. So, what you should know, I said yesterday that understand your natural speed, that is point number one, very important. Understand your natural speed, how fast you speak and create content which you can afford for a say 30 minutes talk, for example. In 30 minutes with your natural speed, how many slides you can cover? And within that, within that number of slides, say 15 or 18 slides for 30 minutes presentation, knowing your natural speed and some slides are more important than the other. So, you would naturally go slower with those slides and some slides are less important. It is for introductory purpose, so you may have to go fast. And I had a question yesterday, uh, this is the right time to answer that. Introduction about previous work present work, future scope, justification, etcetera, how do you balance out these different sections of a talk? Introduction, for a 18 slide presentation for 30 minutes, 18 slides total number. First slide, do not count the title slide conclusion and usually you know people will have a big thank you slide at the end. They religiously put that, thank you slide at the end. Okay. So, taking these slides out, introduction, uh, the, the title slide and thank you slide out and there will be acknowledgement. If take those slides out, you have 18 slides total. In that 18 slide, do not give introduction more than say 5. 5 itself is on the higher side. 3 to 4 slides are good for introduction because your people have come here to listen to you what you found and what is the core of your talk. So, do not burden them with too much introduction, too lengthy introduction, it is going to be a distraction. And now, having known that you have 18 slides to go through, you know the natural speed, you have practiced with, with a, a, you know, a nowadays cell phone with timer and all. So, you practice, you know the natural speed and within that natural speed, you know how, how fast you need to go to be able to cover that 18 slides on time. Now, there is an advanced concept which I will revert to the same point of timing. Uh, yesterday, somebody asked during the question session that, uh, you know, sometimes you finish too early. So, how do you manage that? I will come to that point. That is an advanced concept. There are no uh, written rules. Now, I talked about this mother tongue accents, but there are many words that come along with. But these words should be avoided. This has nothing to do with mother tongue. This thing, that thing, I found this thing and in the introduction they have studied that thing, this thing, that thing. It keeps coming every sentence, you know, such a distraction. And you must deliberately, deliberately avoid and the best way to do that, you give, give your talk to your friend and the friends will, your friends will tell you that you are repeating this word 10 times. You know, in, um, in uh, my college days, one day I I think uh, some of my friends sat and counted a word a, a faculty member in my college used to use in his, a, you know, every sentence he will have. I forgot what that word was. I think in fact, in fact or actually, I, I think actually, that word actually he will use that, you know, you know every, end of every sentence he will say actually. So, we started counting and you know how, how we did counting? Using the tally number because we can't like, keep changing it. 111 cross 5, 111 cross so, we counted, I think he repeated 46 times in a span of one hour, actually. So, how do you avoid that? You give your talk to your friend and ask them whether there are words like this, whether there are sentence construction which are like, you know, uh, when I was giving my early days uh, talk, uh, one of my friends told me that, uh, Sunoj, you are repeating the following uh, style of presenting. What is, what I was repeating? This is nothing but. This is nothing but an expression. This is nothing but a uh, different form of. So, 
So every sentence I was like, this is nothing but. So then uh, she told me that, no, 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 you are repeating this too often. You know, that was the last time I used that uh, sentence in ever in my life. I stopped using that, this is nothing but. I have literally abolished using that. So such is the power of friends suggesting something and they really mean constructive suggestions. These are not criticisms in the negative direction. These are constructive criticism because they want you to become better. These are sincere friends. Okay. And they told me that you are repeating this very often. And you can take help of your friend to find out words, sentence construction which you are repeating too often. Too often it is not really great. Okay. You should try to minimize such usages. And uh, avoid this, this thing, that thing, you know, uh, key, uh, so all these will come. It is not a crime, but try to minimize that because you are becoming going to be global, right. And when you go, go to UK and give a talk, uh, you cannot use this key and so, they will not understand, right. Do they understand key and so, huh? so they will not understand. So, you should keep that in mind and matlab, matlab is you know, these words are listed from IIT Bombay community. Okay. So, these words vary as you go to south, these words will vary tremendously, uh, but what I am saying is that do not use your uh, mother tongue words directly imported. Use the e English equivalent, pronounced in a mother tongue fashion is fine, but you cannot use uh, you, you know words which are not there in English. The key is something which I hear every day. I have, sh I have shown key, what? Shown key, what key? They know only one key that to operate uh, the, uh, the car, automobile or the key to a problem solution to a problem that they call as key. But there is no key in UK or US or in other parts of uh, the world. So, you must avoid using certain words such as this, matlab. Okay. Uh, when, when people ask questions, you know, matlab uh, I was uh, English, but in between the Hindi words will come. You must be deliberately avoiding that, because what my mission, my purpose of giving this talk is to make this country globally competent. I have a mission to accomplish. What is that mission? I would have stayed back in America forever. I could have stayed back there. And I had the job opportunities. My CV was good, so I would have naturally found a job. Like many other Indians, I would have stayed back. But I had a determination when I came back to this country that I want to transfer what I am good at to my fellow citizens. So I want my country to be globally competent. It is a passion that I have. How do I make my people globally competent? To help them with their difficulties. That is exactly what I am doing. Okay. And to tell them what, how I went through and how I improved myself. That is my mission. So, if I tell you what I know and how I improved, you can implement it in your life. Assuming that I was in the US, it is a developed country anyway. So, my services are you know not as much going to be required there, but my services are highly desirable in this country, because I have helped help people, help this nation to grow and you know be, be globally competent. That is exactly what I am doing. So, I have, I have a passion to tell you that you put these things in practice, you are going to be better and better and better and tomorrow all the matlab skis etcetera should be avoided, because you are going to be global. My mission is to not to train you as a local hero, oh, I, this guy is very good in Bombay. What is the use? Nobody need to be very good in Bombay. For business, it is fine. You cannot be a local researcher, right? You cannot be a local teacher. Teachers are now global. Researchers are global. So, you have to be training your students to be globally competent. Therefore, all these are important suggestions to be implemented. Now, so we have finish the presentation, not I, the, the student or the presenter on stage had finished the presentation. All the you know tension packed days of preparing, on stage management, yes done, done. So, he will be like yes. Uh, so, presentation is over. Actually, it is not over. Presentation is over, but the task is not over. The main task is going to begin. So, that is what it is. Now that the talk is over, what next? And all of you know what next. This is again a ner nervous space.
that what, who, when, why, how, questions, what questions and it is time for answers, Q and A. It is a very important section in, in, in a very important session in a scientific uh, presentation, questions and answers. People came there to listen to you and naturally they are experts and they will have questions and uh, if it is an evaluation process, there will be more questions. And in our uh, annual progress uh, evaluation for PhDs and MTECs, actually there is no time bar. Like the presentation, yes, there is a time bar for 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And when question starts, there is no time limit. Sometimes like half an hour, sometimes one hour, one and a half hour still goes on and on and on. Because people are curious to know what you have found, what you have done, whether you have done mistakes or whether you have done correctly. So, it questions goes on and on. But good part of a conference is that chairman will stand up and time over, let us discuss during the coffee break. Actually, that is a relief. It is a relief that you can at least get a temporary break uh, and you can go off the stage and uh, discuss with the uh, fellow uh, scientist outside the auditorium. The trouble with questions is that since you are on stage, again the fear of being judged will come back strongly. Somebody is asking you a question, it is a good question and you know the answer, you answer. So, uh, most part of the audience will think that, oh, this guy knows what he is speaking about. Suppose he asks ask me a question, I do not know the answer. Instead of telling that I do not know the answer, you start beating around the bush, tell him some wrong answers, then everybody would think that, oh, this guy does not know what he is speaking about. So, it is a it is an intimidating phase in giving a talk and the strategy is how to take questions. That is what I am going to talk about. Taking questions, listen to the questions carefully. Video so, assume that somebody is asking me a question. So, I would like, I can hear that even though I can hear with the mic or anything, I should show some enthusiasm, some interest that I am listening to. So, just naturally, you know, bend towards them. You know, bending will not make them, make me reach uh, to, uh, to, to him, right. But even though, but I will, I will just, oh, could you please repeat the question, if I am not clear. So, I get, actually in doing so, you do not tell that, you know, repeat the question every time. Listen to the question carefully, but if you are not clear about the question, you can request them to repeat the question. Could you please and use the language very carefully there. Do not say repeat the question, that is very offensive. Okay. Could you please repeat the question and then listen to the question carefully. Understand the question first before answering. Understand the question first. Okay. And you do not have to give a spontaneous answer. That few seconds you have to think and answer. It, this is not like Kaun Benega Karodpati. Those questions are of very different type. And you have, you can call a friend, you have 50 50 choice, you have different options there. But here, only you are supposed, to, only you know the answer. The person who is asking question. In most scientific presentations, the person do not know the answer, he is only asking for clarification or perhaps giving a suggestion or perhaps asking a very genuine question, which you have not thought about. So, it is very important to listen to the question carefully, give due respect to the question, even if it comes from a tiny little boy in the, in, in, in the audience. Do not underestimate people I told in the beginning. Do not, under, do not underestimate people based on their appearance. It can be very deceptive. Do not think that somebody who is like well dressed is a great hero who is asking questions. He can ask a very stupid question. And somebody who is like very shabbily dressed, you know, not paying much attention during the entire talk, he was like partly sleeping, but he stood up and asked a great question. So, do not give emphasis to who is asking the question. Listen to the question carefully. You make the distinction very clear. What is the question and what is the answer? That is the only concern. Not that, oh, this great guy, he asked me a question. So, I am already nervous in answering. You know the answer. It does not matter who is asking the question. What is the question? What is the answer? That should be your thought process. Connect these two question, answer and deliver the answer. That is important. If the question is really good, you should say that good question. That is your first response. So, somebody asked me a question. Uh, yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday during interaction se uh, session, somebody asked me a question. My response was good question. 
And the question I remember, the question was how to plan your talk such that what if you finish early? That was the question. Actually, it is a very good question. So, my what was my immediate response when I am beginning to answer? I said good question, then answer. So, you can respond if you think that it is a good question. Do not for decoration sake, you do not say that. It may be a really bad question if you say that good question, others in the audience will think that okay, oh okay, this is what it is. So, if it is a good question, you say that good question and then answer. Now, there are situations some really smart questions will come, really smart questions and you need time to think and in what is, what is the best posture? Uh, those who have noticed this uh, German famous statue, there is a thinker's uh, statue uh, somewhere in Berlin, I guess. So a thinker will sit like sit like a like this. So we can't show this kind of posture that you are thinking. At the same time, you should know that if you need time to answer, and you are sure that if you spend say like uh, 30 seconds, one minute, you may be able to answer. Ask for time. How do you ask for time? Um, good question. Let me, let me, in, in this action actually you are thinking. So, you should tell, uh, uh, let me try to, this is not a bad, bad because people think that if you tap here something will come, right. So, some great thought will come or uh, you know, in the frontal region you are supposed to be storing old, old information. So, uh, this tapping I do not know how it helps, but generally you know, most scientists do this, oh, uh, like great question, let me, let me think. And this is also a, a, a mode to show that you, you are like very intelligent. If you type it, you will get an answer. It's not that that the case. Actually, in doing so, this is a good body language to borrow time. In that sense, it is good. So you may, uh, oh well, um, you you can borrow time, and that's the technique. You borrow time and then answer. So this is the second category of question. Questions with straightforward answers answer, listen to the question and answer. Questions which requires thinking, on stage thinking cannot last more than 30 seconds or 1 minute. But if you think that you can answer, take your time and then um, let me think, uh, I think and in, in saying so, you are taking time to think and you will answer. That is the second type of question. There is another type of question which do not have an immediate answer. It may require say take a piece of paper and write, but on stage you cannot do that. It may require further thinking and further thought process before it can be correctly addressed. So, in that context what you uh, what you should say is that uh, I think we would be able to uh, find an answer, uh, but however, however uh, it, it would take a little while to uh, come to a correct conclusion on that. Uh, can I? Can I speak to you after after the presentation is over? Can I speak to you during the coffee break? Uh, can we postpone the discussion during the lunch hours, during the during the uh, you know break? So that's a very polite way of telling. Okay, so you can postpone answering a question after the talk, if the question is such that it takes little bit of you know say a derivation, little bit of working out before you can find an answer or you want to refer to something before you can answer, you can always postpone the question, always postpone the answer. Okay. And you should know how to postpone the answer. Only on those questions which requires further examination. And you cannot use that for as a tool, as a defensive mechanism to avoid answering. That is not possible. A straightforward question, what is a plus b all square? Can we talk that after the break? Then people would be like, you know, almost like you will get slapped, correct? So you can't you can't uh, buy time for a plus b the whole square. That you should be answering spontaneously. The last category of question, which can be quite intimidating question, because people would want to know how deep you know, and there are people who want to ridicule what you have done. Okay, how do you how do you handle them? You give them the deserving place that uh, can I prefer not to answer you? It is a very, very nice powerful way of telling. And you know at this stage, uh, if you are, if you are a, uh, if you are in a college setup, uh, this is not required. This is a very advanced stage, like I am referring to international platforms, where you are intimidated, 
intimidated and you are uh, indirectly being ridiculed and such things do not happen normally in a college environment. Like college either you are being evaluated or you are, you are giving a lecture, uh, they, such things do not happen. But in a conference, if you, are, if you got the sense that the idea behind this question is to intimidate you, then you can always tell that can I prefer, uh, I prefer not to answer this question. Uh, for a variety of reasons and uh, it is ok, no, nobody can force you to answer it. Okay, this is like last type of question and um, uh, yeah, th this is about handling questions and you can use this, uh, this, this kind of uh, poster to uh, take time and answer and take your time and answer these questions. So, that is about taking questions. So, what I have done till now uh, on stage delivery that was the entire focus of today's lecture. And then last section remaining is uh, improvement, which is a continuous process. I have already touched upon few of these aspects. Continuous improvement. As you attend more and more conferences, listen to more and more people, you learn something new from them. Note down, oh that was a very nice way of presenting it. His introduction was very good. You liked it and you, you may want to implement that. It is not that uh, Sunod's recommendation should be universally accepted. I do not believe that because I myself continually refine if I come across a great speaker who speak much better than me, I am really fascinated to listen to such people. So, I have some very good friends in Germany and US, they are like outstanding speakers, you know outstanding to the extent that 30 minutes they speak about at least 5 to 10 minutes people will be laughing. They are such great entertainers. And they speak very serious science and they are great entertainers, these are advanced concepts. And if you re read the last line, humor, humor is very important. Humor will add value to your talk, but humor pre prepared or, or, or you know pre uh, match fixed humors would not work, usually it is a disaster. Okay. I will tell you with purpose I had that slide, you, if you recollect that slide, the car half rest and half car. It is supposed to be a humor, but none of you laughed. That is the difference between a pre planned humor, a, that slide, that cartoon was supposed to be for humor, but none of you laughed. This, this slide, the car is a half hybrid, half rest. What was my purpose of my uh, objective of showing this? To come back and show that out of context humor will not work, number one. Second, Pre-planned humor will not work. And third, humor is not natural to everybody. And fourth, humor is not a must, because these are advanced concepts, advanced concepts in scientific presentation. So, you cannot prepare a humor, it is not natural to all. If it is natural to you, do not hesitate, entertain the crowd. Okay. In my lectures, every, every 30 minutes there will be a huge laughter in the class. And I do not plan, it just so happens that every lecture there will be two sessions of laughter and it goes for about at least a minute or two. And in IIT people are so naughty that they will begin to clap, first they will laugh and then they will clap, because they are appreciating that the humor was great. Okay. If the humor was not good and if I tried, assuming a pre-planned humor, if I tried they will say, yeah. So, that, that is IIT usage, daya, they say daya, I never understood the real essence of this word meaning, but uh, I am used to this now and I also use this word, daya. So, they, they say this, this kind of thing. So, humor pre plan will not work and if you are good at humor, I have known many people who are very good at humor, but not on stage. My question is, why not on stage? You have to be natural on stage. If you have humor sense, better use it. Do not take it too seriously. If you use humor uh, effectively, say once in once in 10 minutes, it is so entertaining, because you by doing that it is much better than a coffee break to bring back the attention. This is the, uh, uh, the uh, great admiration I have towards two of the speakers, I think I should take their names, uh, they are my very good friends, uh, Christopher Kramer from University of Minnesota and uh, Peter Schreiner from University of Giessen in Germany. Kramer is from US and uh, Schreiner is from uh, Germany. 
and these people are so amazing you know every 10 minutes the crowd will be laughing so much and within next 30 minutes they are on serious business again go back and next 10 minutes again there will be another laughter so good so good and if you have humor sense and if i talk to chris kramer outside the uh, auditorium like it is 10 minute interval in a, in a in his serious scientific talk if i talk to him outside every 2 minutes you will be laughing so he had great humor sense okay very good humor sense and if you have make use of that don't take it too seriously that you know people are going to take it in a negative sense if you have humor make use of it this is advanced advanced concept okay uh, time management uh, following upon yesterday's question uh, you need to gain lot of experience to manage time on stage i have given all the preliminary details about how to manage your time such as understand your natural speed uh, how many slides you can afford all those tips are already given now the time management i am talking right now is an advanced concept time management that is a time management on stage on stage time management that is extempore you decide how fast how slow you want to go on stage you never had a thought about this is an advanced thing i can share my experience i go to any conference with I, even though i my natural speed allows me to speak one slide per minute so if i am giving a 30 minutes talk i can afford to speak something like 30 32 slides but you know what i do i will have something like 40 to 50 slides but talk is only for 30 minutes and i take a on stage decision after looking at when i go uh, when i complete one section and move on to the next section i have a look at the timer and look at the uh, uh, look at my laptop for the timer or look at the watch for the timer or look at any display time that is available in the auditorium and then i decide whether i should speed up or slow down that is on stage time management it's a long long run process my friends it, it, it is not something which i can recommend that these are the uh, guidelines but keep in mind that you, you do not have to worry too much if you have full control and you can manage on stage speed up and uh, accelerate decelerate on stage but i think it is really fantastic to be able to learn that have excess slides and go fast when it is required that is on stage management uh, no fixed number of slides because it is a dependent it is dependent on the person and now uh, it, to summarize the whole thing and I am uh, very glad that Professor Fartak had just walked in the timing is so good that you come in at the time when I finish okay what I try to do as one person I cannot change the world but I can change the world of one person so if any one of you listening to me decided that I am going to implement these guidelines and you decide that you are going to change from today I think I served the purpose that was my objective okay now I will uh, finish with this uh, to uh, to convey that how important is time okay yesterday is a cancelled check which has no meaning what is the yesterday which I am referring to those 20 years where I was not speaking English correct pre-1996 days where I was not speaking English even though I had lot of theoretical knowledge grammar poem uh, prose all I was good you know marks were also good all those are fine but what is the use you have to put it in practice right so those were the cancelled check I cannot worry about a cancelled check past is past present tense is tense present tense what you see and perceive is the only reality and you must take note of that now tomorrow is a promissory note unless you encash it has no meaning what is the meaning of having a promissory note that oh i will give you 10 lakh worth of something what is the use unless you encash so future is also fictitious today is the only cash that you have spend wisely what is that cash i am referring to the time if you have time today and if you prepare well create your content decide on how to deliver sequence of slides on stage management time adjustment give an effective presentation then then you are using your time effectively time is precious 
And now on, instead of wasting time on different things, unimportant things, if you have a story to tell, if you have a story to tell, make that story as powerful as possible. Do your best, because present tense is the only reality, and that will make your future better. No point in having a promissory note. No point in having a cancelled check. So spend your time wisely. And with that, I think I should stop. And thank you all for listening to me for last two days.